The Power of a Thank You Note by Christopher Boswell Read by Lyle Malcolm A handwritten thank you, verbal gratitude, or online review may hold magical powers. Thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. Thankfulness may consist merely of words. Gratitude is shown in acts. A quote by Henry Frederick Amiel. Exceptional People Sometimes I board dogs taking care of pet canines while their pack leaders work or travel. It's a fun way to unwind after a long trip out in the field. Not all of the clients leave feedback. In fact, it's only about 15%. 49 people have left thank you reviews for one service I offer. Here's one. Wow, 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 cannot express how great Chris is. He watched my dog Tessa for a week during the holidays. I was at first a little worried to leave her with someone, but once I met him, all that went away. Tessa instantly liked Chris, and all my worries were put at ease. He answered all my questions I had and was very interested in Tessa's routine. You can tell that he loves dogs so much. He's such a kind, caring person that will take amazing care of your dog. He kept me updated by sending me pictures of Tessa throughout the week. If Chris is available, you should definitely book with him. He will treat your dog like his own. Nicole C. The thank you completes the transaction, leaving both participants feeling blessed. One client sends me handwritten thank you notes after each booking of her prize-winning Iris Setter. These are so thoughtful they can't help but have a profound effect on the psyche. Gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues but the parent of all others. Marcus Tullius Cicero Making Time to Be Great For me, it can be so easy to demand things occur the way I want. Of course, my brain tells me that's how they should already be. I'm currently in a hotel room and incurred the extra expense to stay in a four-star hotel, hoping to be more comfortable. After many days on the road, I was depleted and ready for quality rest. Upon awaking, I took the time to go visit the Continental Breakfast. One of the reasons I chose this hotel was the advertised hot breakfast with eggs and meat. My diet calls for protein instead of processed foods full of carbs and sugar. Upon opening the chafing dishes on the breakfast buffet line, I'm presented with nothing. The trays are empty. Looking around, I see there is no fruit either. Disappointing, I just go for a cup of coffee and find the milk container is empty which means no one can have any cereal from the large four-bin dispenser that has multiple varieties. It's well before 9 and the 10 a.m. finish. I decide to walk over to the desk and ask for some help. Once there, I find a young woman who appears to be asleep but is looking at the screen on her phone. As I speak, she slowly looks up as if she indeed was asleep. When I ask about refilling the milk, she yawns before giving me a long explanation about the person who called in sick this morning. My reply, if you would get off your phone, maybe you could come out here and help. To which she begins more useless talking, explaining they are out of milk. Gratitude is a powerful catalyst for happiness. It's the spark that lights a fire of joy in your soul. A quote by Amy Collette. Gratitude is a powerful catalyst for happiness. It's the spark that lights a fire of joy in your soul. A quote by Amy Collette. Roadblocks to Gratitude On the way back to my room, I feel disgust, depleted, and frankly, like a jerk. Displaying and feeling a lack of gratitude leaves me feeling heavy, lethargic, and full of remorse. Rarely does dissatisfaction and criticism leave anyone else feeling enlivened or inspired either. The night had been rough as a traveling high school baseball team was placed in the room next door with a passage inside leading to my room. Their loud voices came right through that door, interrupting my much-needed sleep. Getting through that, other elements I liked were present, so I extended the room online for another day despite the irritants. 
I will be gone before breakfast tomorrow, and the room is comfortable with decent internet access. So just now, a knock comes to the door. It was the hotel manager, not knowing I had extended online. I told him I had already paid. He said, we'll take care of it. I saw the opportunity to absolve myself from the early assholedness and thanked him for the lovely hotel. Very beautiful, I exclaimed, and immediately felt better. But that was before the call, bothering me again after just getting sat back down. It was a girl this time, from the desk, asking the same question the manager had just asked me. Informing her that the manager had just been here telling me he would handle it, she said okay. I hung up. Then I put on some classical music, ready to finally do some writing. I sat down and the phone rang again. It's the manager re-saying all the same things we had already said. Asshole me showed up again, telling him I came here to rest and would prefer not to be bothered three times for an issue that is not requiring anything of me at this time. He went on to say I just needed to be checked out and checked back in again. I promised him I'd stop by the desk the next time I came out of the room. Is there anything you need from me at this time? I said forcefully. No, he responded. And there I was again, feeling depleted and absolutely no gratitude. WTF. If you're reading the text version of this story, a picture appears of a man holding a sign saying, I'm an asshole. Make it a habit to tell people thank you, to express your appreciation sincerely and without the expectation of anything in return. Truly appreciate those around you, and you'll soon find many others around you. Truly appreciate life, and you'll find that you have more of it. A quote by Ralph Marston. Feeling a part of. Quickly, I went back out for a cup of coffee, dropping by the desk to apologize. The woman who had been there before, someone's daughter, who really wanted to be anywhere else now, lit up with a wonderful smile. She said something about the milk again, and a man mopping the floor heard us. Mumbling something, he headed to check the refrigerator. He came out shaking his head and put the mop down. I'm going to get some milk, sir, he replied. Come back in ten minutes and you can have cereal. This is unacceptable. Thanking him, I said it was not necessary, knowing I had zero sugar protein bars in my bag. Going on, I complimented the renovation they must have recently done, mentioning more I was thankful for, like the nice colors and high ceilings. We fist bumped and I returned here to the writing desk in my room. Reaching into my suitcase, I retrieved a note card from the assortment I make it a habit to carry. As I write a thank you note to the hotel for the beautiful accommodations, another knock comes to the door. Now what comes right out of my too eager to be an asshole mouth? A laugh comes from the other side. It's a good thing, I hear someone say. Curious, I get up to answer. It's Joe, the guy who had the mop. He has both skim and regular milk in his hand, offering me my choice. Skim, I say, as we both laugh. Anything else you need, just let me know, he says. Thank you, Joe. Keep making a difference in the world. It looks good on you, I said, before closing the door. He smiled large. If I can put messages like this in writing, their power will be increased exponentially, lifting others above the ordinary, while enriching my own well-being in the process. Did you know this can be done on the Medium application? Ask me how. All is right in the world again. Thank you, God. See you next time. Cheers. Copyright Christopher Boswell, 2019, All Rights Reserved. I hope you found some value in this article. If you did, please follow the links below for more of my recent work. Maybe another will resonate. Until next time, Christopher. Please take a moment to leave a comment. You might just inspire someone. When Christopher isn't writing from wherever, he can be found traveling or capturing photographs somewhere in the United States. He may be generating graphic design, building a website, processing images or video, flying his unmanned aerial vehicle, wrangling dogs, or backpacking and kayaking. He lives in Tacoma, Washington. 
We invite you to learn more about Christopher at Real Window Creative.